Benny the Bear, your star reporter. We have your top story. But as always, if this is your first time, feel free to like and subscribe and share. We appreciate it. So now we're going to go to our top story. And we have here today, or this evening, or I don't know. Tier 9 and PvP rule changes. Hey folks. Saltwater here. I don't post on the forums much, and many of you don't know who I am, so I figure a brief introduction is in order. I'm Saltwater. I worked as a designer on BP back in 2012, but was on different projects from 2013 to 2018. Since I've returned, my primary responsibility has been the Tier 8 PvP space, Conquerors, Defenders, Interceptors, Heavy Turrets, etc. Without Post 12 and Tier 9 PvP on the horizon, it seems like a good time to start the discussion on a third leg of PvP namely, some fundamental rules changes, and quality of life improvements. PvP Rule Changes Introduction Before providing more detail, I want to say that changes to the fundamental rules of a PvP system of any game are potentially a big deal. Big deals deserve to be taken seriously. These aren't flippant changes, and some of them are things we've pondered for over a year now just to ensure the best possible outcome. Bringing them up in conversation now is a chance for all of us to engage with them conceptually before they officially happen. Over the coming weeks, members of the PvP playtesting community will be playtesting the new rules, and Tier 9 slash Op 12 content. You may notice some folks talking about these changes, that's okay. We hope they will be able to share their experiences during that time, that way we can all get a taste of the theory and the reality of the changes before they go live. Furthermore, we know that there are still opportunities to improve PvP systems. The medals system, for example, could use a tune-up. Adding in systems of reward for successful base defense is another. The list of changes proposed here doesn't mean those opportunities won't happen in the future, but all of them would hinge on a healthy, fun, engaging base combat environment to be successful changes, so we're starting with changes designed to drive a healthier, more fun, more engaging base combat environment. PvP Rule Changes Overview First, some simpler changes. The Conquest Repair Queue, normally only available during Bounty, will be 24-7, with half repair turned on during Bounty. As a rule, PvP systems benefit from more engagement. Sometimes all it takes is one or two people to have an idea or see an opportunity that shifts the broader understanding of the game for all players. This change is being made to relieve pressure on pirates who don't engage in PvP as much as they would if they didn't have additional pressure on the repair queue. Tier 9 Conquerors will not be allowed in defense fleets. Tier 9 defenders will not be allowed to attack bases. This change would not impact older hull tiers, so no adjustment to current strategies or base layouts are required as a result. This change has been considered for a long time, and it has been requested by many players. However, when the majority of the community relies on using conquerors in defense fleets, it becomes incredibly disruptive for us to make the change. With the escalation to Tier 9, we find ourselves with the opportunity to gate it moving forward, as opposed to pulling the rug out from under folks who are finding success in the current meta with Conquerors on defense. Special note, this change would go live with Op 12. 
This means that the Warhound can be placed in defense fleets until that time. It isn't against the rules yet, but be aware that it won't remain that way forever. There is value in looking for effective defense strategies without Warhound guards for the time being. Bubble Pad Changes Overview The next four changes are sort of a package deal, and they're all aimed at the Bubble Pad. As is often the case with fundamental rules, like damage protection, and how it is triggered, things become interwoven and complex very quickly. There is no silver bullet here, otherwise I believe someone else would have identified that silver bullet and shot it sometime in the last 8 years of BP. They need to be viewed as a single change, but first I want to list them individually. Victory for an attacker is no longer determined by the star system, 50%, 100%, outpost. Instead, IT is determined by whether the attacker manages to destroy all of the key buildings, outpost, all warehouses, radio tower, and great hall. Just to get it out of the way, Radio towers and great halls are receiving a new level with OP-12 to give them some durability. We all know a stiff breeze can raise them at this point, they won't remain that way. Before thinking too much about that change, let's look at the next one. Bases, and defense fleets, will only take persistent damage if the attacker wins. This rule is exactly as simple as it sounds. If an attacker hits you, and fails to secure victory, your base and defense fleet will be repaired to the exact state it was in when the attack started. Let's quickly fold in the next rule. Blue bubbles are only gained if your base is defeated. If you lose base defense, you will gain damage protection as normal. If you win, however, you suffer no damage and can still be attacked. Finally, the last rule. Afterward, we can look at these four as a whole. Red bubbles from bounty, that prevent specific players from attacking you too many times, are now a 24-7 rule. This means if a specific player attacks you three times, and you successfully defend your base from that attacker three times, that specific player is prevented from attacking you again for a few days. Other players would still be able to attack you, because you keep winning, you beautiful pirate, you. Bubble pad changes, analysis. Yeah. Okay. So each of those rules individually is pretty simple to understand in a vacuum, but together they represent a change in how pirates think about attacking and defending. The most notable change is probably that prep hits are no longer possible. Since the base and the defense fleet only take damage on a defeat, which triggers a blue bubble, an attacker must win in a single hit to secure a win. If a defender's base is a puzzle, an attacker must solve it. Attackers get multiple attempts to learn the base before the red bubble kicks in, and if they fail, anything they learn can be used in their next hits. This also gives the defender an opportunity to make changes, of course. Another notable difference is that the bubble pad technically no longer exists. Since prep hits are no longer part of the equation, a base builder has a lot more flexibility in how they can build a successful defense, it's no longer primarily about deleting buildings and managing upgrade levels to maintain a bubble pad that forces attackers into a single hit against an optimal amount of remaining defenses because every attack would now be a single hit against the optimal amount of remaining defenses. The proposition facing a base builder now is how to create an optimal defense with all of the tools at their disposal and without any self-imposed restrictions brought about by the bubble pad. Thanks.
These changes are likely to go into test with the PvP playtest group in early February, and if everything goes swimmingly, they would go live with the release of Outpost 12. However, should things not go well, we will adjust. Thank you to everyone for your patience. Change can be scary, but it can also be good. So often, we hear a buzz of negative speculation before things launch. For that very reason, and to open the door to positive and constructive conversations,